Já, góðan daginn. Gaman að sjá ykkur svona mörg með okkur á fund sem að fyrir nafnið IoT byltingin er hafin, hvernig hefur hún áhrif á þig. Við erum búin að vera að velta fyrir okkur þessi nokkur ár með hérna Internet of Things. Við þurfum nú að fara að koma okkur saman um gott nafn á íslensku á þetta. Hérna hlutanetið eða tækjanetið eða hvað við ætlum að kalla þetta. En sem sagt, það er svona búið að vera búið að byltingu í nokkur ár eins og oft gerist í í tækninni og svo svona gerist ekki mikið en ég held að að hérna við teljum að nú er byltingin að gerast og við erum nú þegar byrjuð að selja IoT og erum að stíga stórt skref þessa dagana með Vodafone Group sem að hérna og það er svona kannski ástæðan fyrir þessum fundi og munum vera mjög virk í þessu hérna þessari byltingu á næstu árum sem við teljum mikið tækifæri fyrir okkar viðskiptavinni og sem og Vótafón og upplýsingatækni geiran. Ef við skoðum aðeins þessa byltingu frá sjónarhóli fjarskipta fyrir tækja þá var það þannig að það tók hundra ár að tengja miljard heimila við gömlu fastlínuna. Farsímabyltingin tók styttri tíma 20 ár að tengja sjö miljarða tenginga af fólki við farsímanett. Það er verið að spá um 50 miljarða tenginga á tíu árum í Internet of Things. Og það er alveg ljóst að þessi fjöldi tenginga og þetta net tenginga mun hafa gríðarleg áhrif við kannski náum ekki alveg ennþá utan um það hversu mikil áhrif eða nákvæmlega hvernig hvernig mun þetta breyta viðskiptamótelum sem fyrirtæki byggja á, það munum koma ný viðskiptamótel, þetta mun breyta lífi fólks og hafa áhrif á lífskjæði þess og svo framvegis, en við vitum að breytingarnar verða stórar og og en auðvitað hvenær þeir verða og hvernig þeir verða er spurning. Það er líka spurning hvar ætlar land eins og Ísland sem að byggir auðvitað mikið á því að vera í alþjóðlegri samkefni og þarf að vera hagkvæmt út af smæðsinni. Hvar ætlum við að stilla okkur af í þessu? Og ég tel að það sé gríðalega mikilvægt fyrir okkur að vera framalega í þessari bylgju og upp á samkeppsæfni okkar fyrirtækja. Og við allavega trúum því og erum þarfærandi að fara að fullu afli fjarskiptamegin inn. En auðvitað verða margir samstarsala og mörg fyrirtæki sem að koma saman í þessu. Þetta er svona smá útlistun á því hvernig Vótafón og við erum að nálgast þetta þetta er í raunni bara geiðarnir sem umræðir og það eru tækifæri í öllum geirum í þessu þau eru misvörandi eftir eðli geir og svo framvegis það sem er skemmtilegt er að þetta byggir á ímissi fjarskiptatækni þið sjáið hann upp á glærunni það er talað um 2G og það er svolítið skemmtilegt 2G kerfið sem við heldum að væri að verða úrelt það mun fá nýtt hlutverk í þessu Og það er kannski leikillinn að að þessu fyrir fjarskipta fyrirtæki er að við erum að taka inn við okkar og við erum að nýta það á í rauninni annan hátt oft á tíðum og eru þá að leynda að ná að nýta fjárfestinguna betur sem hefur verið farið í og við Íslendingar stöndum vel að víði þegar kemur að farsímakerfum til dæmis og breynda fjarskiptakerfum almennt. Þannig að þetta er, við stöndum vel að kerfum til að styðja þetta. Virðiskeðjan, aðeins svona ef við reynum að brjóta þess niður hverjir þurfa að koma saman, auðvitað fyrirtæki og þarfir þeirra með til samkeppsefni og bæta þjónustu, lækka kostnað en síðan er þetta í rauninni, þetta eru tæki, þetta eru fjarskipti og þetta eru upplýsingatækni. Þetta þrennt þarf að koma saman til þess að búa til lausnir á þessu sviði. Og við tökum hlutverk okkar sem fjarskipta fyrirtæki í þessari, hérna, þessari virðiskiðu mjög alvarlega og reyndar Vótafón líka. Vótafón, hérna, seldi fyrir nokkrum árum Verizon, hérna, fyrir metuppaðir í bandaríkjunum og 
stærstu fjárfestingarnar fóru í að bæta kerfið og í internet of things. Þannig að Vodafone Group er leiðtogi meðal fjarskiptifyrirtæki í heiminum í þessari þróun og það er svona eitthvað sem að við viljum reyna að hérna að smiti yfir til íslenska fyrirtækja. Við erum í rauninni í dag að tilkynnu það að við erum komin í alþjóðlegt samstarf við Vodafone á sviði Internet of Things, við erum þess búin að stækka samning okkar við Vodafone, þannig að nú höfum við aðgang að í rauninni plattformi þeirra til þess að manitjera simkort. Þetta þýðir að það er hægt að yfir netið að virkja og afvirkja, manitjera simkortum og þetta getur skipt miklu máli ef að það er komið til þess mikill fjöldi af kortum út að það sé gott kerfi sem heldur utan um það. Það er líka gott við að vinna með aðeins og Vodafone er að þetta eru alþjóðleg simkort, þannig að það skiptir ekki máli hvert simkortið fer. Það eru, það er sem sagt, ef við myndum bara setja okkar eigið simkort í þetta, þá myndum við að lenda í reiki, verðum út um, hérna, víðum heim. En það sem er ekki, það sem er ekki síst mikilvægt, er í raunni samstarf við IoT teimi Vodafone á heimsvísu með tilliti til lausna fyrir íslensk fyrirtæki eftir geirum. Þannig að við getum átt samtal saman um í rauninni Internet of Things miða við hvaða geira þið eru því og þá fundið þær lausnir sem er að virka með tilliti til tækja, hugbúnar og hvernig fjarskiptir eru gerð miða við ykkur og það er kannski það sem hefur skort í þess að umræði svolítið, hún er búin að vera dálítið almenn en núna verður umræðan að fara niður á lausnir, hvað er hægt að gera, hvernig er hægt að ná samkefsefni, lækka kostnað, bæta þjónust og svo framvegis og það er það samtal sem að við erum tilbúin í í dag og mjög spennt að taka. Þannig að við segjum bara að IoT byltingin er hafin, við erum þegar farin að selja lausnir á þessu sviði, ætlum að fjölga lausnir mikið, viljum gjarnan eiga samstarfi við ykkur, þetta eru stór og lítil fyrirtæki sem eru og hugmyndin hér á eftir er að Cyril Desenel sem er hérna yfirmaður hjá Vodafone og vinnur alþjóðlega þessum málum, mun svona aðeins kynna fyrir okkur hvar við erum stödd, síðan ætlum við að hafa panel og heyra í þremur fyrirtækjum, Eimskip, Marel og Securitas sem hafa verið að stíga skref í þessu og hafa eflaust hugmyndir um að gera meira og að eiga svona góða umræðu vegna þess að þetta gefur okkur öllum hugmyndir um hvað er hægt að gera næst og svo framvegis og hvernig við getum búið til þetta samtal um lausti sem henta okkar geira. Við ætlum að hafa panelinn á ensku, þetta er alltaf erfitt að ákveða þegar það er bara einn í salnum sem að talar ensku en okkur finnst áhugavert að Cyril geti tekið þátt í umræðinni vegna þess að hann þekkir mörg case erlendis frá sem að hérna og það getur auðgað umræðinni hérna eftir. Þannig að ég vona að þetta verði bara góð umræða og gaman að vera með ykkur hér í dag. En Ragnhildur Geistóttir, frangandstjóri rekstrar og upplýsingartæknis við Landsbankans ætlar að stýra fundi hér í dag, þannig að ég vil gefa henni orðið. Takk gjallega fyrir. Það er ég að góð daginn, það er ánægjulegt að fá að taka þátt í umræðum, þetta er náttúrulega gríðalega áhuga að vera um, hérna, svo hugmyndafræði sem heitir Internet of Things og það er náttúrulega ljóst að það eru mjög hraða breytingar að verða í þessu og það verður mjög áhvert í dag að fá að hlusta þess á bæði erlendar sögur og ekki kannski hvað síst svona íslenska sögur, hvernig er verið að hagnýta Internet of Things. En mér finnst kannski alltaf svolítið gaman að það að við lifum náttúrulega þeim heimi, það eru gríðilega hraða breytingar og hérna Stefa fór að þessu verið eins og þessa farsíma, við þurfum ekkert að fara neitt rosa langt eftir tíman. 10-15 ár, ég veit ekki, árið 2000, þá áttum við örugglega öll eitthvað að síma. Aðar máli hjá mér var að eiga sko lítinn síma um þeim tíma, en hann gerði náttúrulega lítið annað heldur en að vera bara sími. Kannski, og sem var náttúrulega byltig á þeim tíma, hatt að senda kannski SMS og koma svona smá saman tölvupóstur og internet og svona frekar hægvirt. En í dag allt í einu, þú veist, eru við bara með þetta gangandi með tölvu á okkur sem er náttúrulega gríðilega öflugt og við kannski breytt okkar lífi, kannski meira heldur við áttum okkur á og kannski má segja að við séum á hverju internet og þings gangandi með þessi tæki á okkur allan tíman þó að við séum kannski ekki með hlutur en í þessu samingi mér svolítið áhugavert að tala um að í dag að 90% af gögnum sem séu til hafi orðið til á síðustu tveimur árum 
sem segir okkur hvað hraðin í uppsögtækninni er gríðilega mikið og það má kannski internet og þing svo kannski getum við rætt það sér það eftir hvað með allt þetta gagnamagn þarf, veist, er bara gagnamagn að fara að margfaldast út af þessu þannig að það verður svona áhugvert eina þáttur sem verður áhugvert að, að skoða en einn sinni einföldustu mynd hvað er internet og þing svo þetta náttúrulega snýst um að geta tengt uh, hluti, tæki, vélar hvað sem er við internetið safna upplýsingum og þannig að hagnýta en hátt hægt að já, ap, et, eina, safna upplýsingum og taka, taka ákvarðanir en hvernig var þetta til hvað, hvað er löng saga það kannski með þetta er svo margt annað gríðilega mikið að gerast núna síðustu árum ég las það einhvers staðar svona mjög til skemmtunar að, að fyrsta tæki sem var tengt með við interneti var, var árið 1982 í háskóli bandaragjörum inn á Karneki Mellum og það var svo kók sjálfsali og það var þetta að fá upplýsingar um byrðir og hitastig á á, á dósunum og flöskum sem var í þessari, þessum sjálfsala þannig að hérna, þetta er kannski ekki alveg glæni ítt en, en kannski allra síðustu árum er það náttúrulega komin mjög mikinn hagnýtt svona dæmi um hvernig nota má internet og þings en hérna við ætlum sem sagt að eiga hér góða umræði dag og við erum erlenda fyrirlestar hann hérna sýrir D-Channel D- 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 og hann er sem sagt head of machine to machine Internet of Things in Northern Europe at Vodafone Group og ég ætla bara að svissa yfir ensku þannig að rastin af rástöfin verður ensku og ég vona að það bara gangi vel í, í pallborun hér eftir að hafa þetta ensku þannig að við skulum bara reyna að eiga skemmtilegt samtal um þetta en það gríðarlega mikið sem er hægt að ræða um Internet of Things but I will start to introduce you Cyril he joined the Vodafone Group in January 2011 and has a wealth of experience across the IoT space and a number of international markets. And since arriving at Vodafone, Cyril has played a key role in driving Vodafone position in the IoT market across Europe. And uh, before joining Vodafone, he worked at Sierra Wireless and also at Johnson Controls Automotive Electronics. So I'm very much looking forward to listen to what he has to say and he's going to tell Tell us about uh, how Internet of Things can transform our lives and businesses. Welcome, Cyril. So nice to be here. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you, Vodafone Iceland, for inviting me. I'm really, glad to, I'm really happy to take you through the IoT world. I think it's a fascinating world, bringing a lot of opportunities for all kind of enterprise in the world, and especially in Iceland, where we'll be glad to help you to deliver your IoT project. The world is changing fast. Probably Stefan said it, even if I didn't understand a lot of words of what he said. The technology is evolving really fast and all companies are going through a digital transformation. And Internet of Things is one of the technology that can contribute to help your company to go through that transformation. And you're, you're familiar with Vodafone connecting people, connecting employees. We are now connecting everything. Machines, assets, cats, dogs, cow, don't believe it or not. So the world is changing really fast. I think the best way to start showing you what Vodafone can do in IoT and what is the IoT world would be through a video. Picture a world where all kinds of products, from cars and home appliances to industrial wind turbines, can communicate about their status and usage in real time. Manufacturers have the power to detect and fix faults with these products before the user ever even notices the problem. Or how about a world where healthcare can happen in the home? instead of the hospital. It's now possible for doctors to monitor patients around the clock and deliver care remotely, freeing up beds and enabling those with chronic conditions to live a more normal life. Or imagine a world in which everything around us, from buildings and bridges to roads and railways, can sense and respond to changing events. Smart cities have the potential to help governments and the private sector tackle society's biggest problems, including congestion, pollution, and crime. Why stop there? Tracking assets across continents, transforming retail cabinets into intelligent objects, and taking control of energy use. These are just a few of the smart services that the Internet of Things is enabling. The IoT is already transforming industries around the world, giving visionary companies the information and insight they need to save money, reduce risk, and better serve their customers. But more than that, it's opening up radical opportunities to innovate entirely new business models and product categories, enabling the as-a-service economy. When everything is connected, the possibilities are endless. 
For 25 years, Vodafone has been helping industry leaders bring their boldest ideas to life, including companies like Porsche, BMW, Enpar, and Amazon. With our unmatched capabilities, experience, and global reach, we can help you take advantage of all that the Internet of Things has to offer too. So what are you waiting for? Let's transform lives and business. Okay, so as the video mentions, the Internet of Things in the past was called Machine to Machine, and it started all about 25 years ago. We called it also telemetry, if you remember, where we're just sending a few bits of data in one direction from the machine to a central server. We started with the fleet management solutions to manage the optimizing the routing and reduce fuel consumption. We connected some industrial alarms at that time, some fuel tanks. That was the beginning. Now, the Internet of Things is touching every sector. Stefan showed all the, the sectors, the vertical sectors that are addressed. Here you can see some others, uh, like the homes. We now connect home, we call it smart home, but not only for alarms, but also for video surveillance, flood detection, and so on and so on. We also connect the containers because we can combine cellular technology and satellite technology in order to track the containers across the world. We, we are going to connect white goods. It's still the beginning, but we are going to do it le uh, step by step. The industrial machines, you will see some examples later on in the presentation, were some successful stories uh, of our customers connecting machines and generating additional revenues to their business, not selling equipment only, but moving to, ser to serving services and not only uh, hardware equipment. Connected car is more a famous one, is more a trendy one. It's still only 10% of the car which are connected. There will be 100% of the car connected, for sure. And with autonomous car, they will be all connected. There is not another way to make it happen. And health sector is the future as well. Today, it's a, it's a slow uh, process to connect um, um, health equipment because there is a lot of certification behind. There's a lot of long processes. But if you look how we can remove uh, some patients uh, from distance from uh, at staying at home and not bringing, coming back to the hospital, this is a trend that is happening more and more. And we will see some examples at the end as well. So the Internet of Things is enabling um, to connect any kind of assets, any kind of machines, everything. But why do, we, why do we do that? Why do our customers are doing that? Because it has some benefits for the company. First, it brings compliance with legislation. There are some European legislation about the cold chain, for example, about the legislation 2020 to reduce CO2 and uh, improve sustainability, etc., etc. So compliance. The second one is to reduce costs, because when you can real-time real remote, um, remotely manage your asset, you don't have to spend as much as if you would have to go and, and visit your asset regularly, like smart meters, for example. But it also generates some f uh, new business, um, new revenue for the companies as, as a third benefit, what is important. And this is quite new in the last five, 10 years. We see the companies generating revenue through the IoT technology, while in the past it was only about compliance or reduction cost. And you will see across examples as well, developing the loyalty with the customers, increasing the satisfaction of the customers, is also um, helped through this technology. Every year we conduct a survey uh, since four years. You have it on your table, by the way. It's a 30-page document, very rich of information. Uh, we go through 1,000 executives across different countries in the world, across different industries, and we ask them about their company, about IoT. What do they know about IoT? Do they use IoT? Uh, do they see the benefits of IoT? Are they intending to move to IoT in case they are not yet using that technology. And here is only a snapshot uh, of, the, of, the, of the feedback we got from these from this thousand executives. You can see that 70% of the businesses say IoT would be critical to the future. Sorry to, to turn now because it's not appearing here. Um, not all of them have adopted yet IoT technology. It's about 28% of all companies across the world who have developed a project or at least a trial with IoT. But 35% are saying are going to move to IoT in the next three years, which will bring more than 60% companies using that technology. So that's a big, big step. To give you an idea, it's about 250 million machines connected today. We talked that within three years, it will be more than half a billion uh, connected machines. We as Vodafone, you will see later on, we have around 40 million uh, machine connected. So it's about 20% of the market. More importantly, I mentioned the benefits before of the IoT technology. 63% of the company that are using IoT see the benefit for that and see the return on investment in 12 or 18 months. 
uh, after deploying their project, which is a, consi a, consider a considerable uh, result. Now, what, how Vodafone can help you? How can Vodafone be your IoT partner? Over the last 27 years, so 25 years, sorry, we have built capabilities and experience around end to end. But seven years ago, we decided to invest heavily in the technology because we had this vision that everything will be connected. So we've invested in, in network, obviously, with a, an unrivaled footprint across the world, but we've inv invested in a dedicated IoT platform that we are launching now in Iceland with Vodafone Iceland. And we have also invested in a dedicated team of experts. We are around 1,400 IoT experts across the world to help our customers to develop their IoT project. So we have invested heavily, which brought us to a, a great result because now we are seen, and I'll come back to that, as the leader by the major analyst in the market. But we have also the best in class IoT proposition, at least what we think. Uh, and we, we also have an unrivaled support organization. As I mentioned, a lot of people are working uh, to help our customers to deploy their project. I'm going to go through these three main points, why we think we could be uh, the great partner for you. So in terms of positioning in the world, there are major analysts that recognize Vodafone as the number one in IoT. There are some analysts that you probably know, Machina Research, Current Analysis, but also Gartner, that for, for most of us is the major analyst in terms of the industry and services. It, I don't know if you're familiar with the magic quadrant from Gartner, but it's, it ranks all the companies in the two scales. On the bottom line, you have the completeness of vision, and on the vertical, you have the ability to execute. And Vodafone has been seen in the last three years as the leader across these two, uh, two scales. Because of our vision, seven years ago, when we built that platform, when we invested in this, heavy, in this number of uh, experts, but also in terms of ability to execute and to deliver, because as I mentioned, we are today connecting 41 million machines in, around the world. And we are breaking away little by little by competition, from competition because we are investing in new technologies and new proposition that you will see a bit later on as well. So we are really proud to be recognized as the leader. We have to stay the leader, of course. It's a lot of work for all of us, but uh, we are confident we will maintain that leadership because it's very strategic for the company. In terms of proposition, as I said, we invested in a dedicated platform. It means that we have a dedicated infrastructure to manage these IoT themes. It means it's not a SIM that you can uh, reach from your phone or whatever. It's a SIM under a specific infrastructure uh, with high resilience as well that, that we have built. Uh, this is quite unique because the customer is now managing his connectivity, managing his SIM by himself. So it's a kind of what I call myself a self-service platform where the customer can manage the state of his SIM. You know, when you have a connection or thousands of connections across the world, you don't know what's happened with them, but sometimes you want to connect, disconnect, suspend, or stop, st or stop the SIM. You can manage it by yourself through the portal uh, that is uh, developed together with that platform. So it's not anymore Vodafone driving, managing the connectivity, it's the customer that manage its own connectivity. And that's the only way, because we have customers who have more than three million connections, like Amazon, or TomTom, or BMW, they have more than millions of connections across the world. They have, to they have to get the control on their connectivity. In the past, it would have been, with the past technology, without the platform, it would be a nightmare for them. We, we use a specific SIM for this, uh, in, that, that works together with that platform, which is called the global SIM. It's a unique reference that can roam everywhere in the world, but that is unique, meaning wherever you deploy your machine, it will connect locally as a local SIM, but it's a unique reference which simplifies your logistic. So think about BMW or any car makers we are supplying. They are producing cars maybe in China and different countries and then they send it to another country where it will be sold. You cannot have different partners in different countries. You need to have a unique SIM and a unique platform to manage all your connectivity for, the connect for bringing the connected car services to your customers. And that SIM can also roam on our competitor network. Sometimes Vodafone is not perfect. We don't have a perfect network. Sometimes we have issues on the network or we have an area where there are no coverage, then we switch to the competitor network to provide good quality of service. Because we are talking about mission critical uh, application with IoT. We are not talking about basic call. Of course, you don't like a drop call as well, but when you have a payment machine that is connected, if the, the network is not, is not there, you cannot, you cannot go through the payment. So we also have what we call national roaming that enables to switch to the competitor network in case we don't have coverage. So it guarantees you the quality of service and to your customers. 
And then we have different kind of technology for the SIM. You have the classical plastic SIM that you, that you, that you have on your phone, but we also have some SIM chip that has an, an electronic component that is soldered on your, on, in your device and that cannot be taken, that cannot be removed, that cannot be stolen, and that, that is much smaller uh, in terms of size to enable you to make smaller device uh, to, to be integrated in your, in your, in your assets. Once we have, uh, once we have uh, won a project with, uh, with our customers, we are helping them to deploy that project. So we start with consultancy, and with them we bring all the expertise we have in the IoT, we bring the best experts of each vertical in order to find the best way to implement their project and to help them to find some return on investment on their project. Then of course we help them to integrate uh, with the platform, uh, what we call the technical onboarding, and then we provide the services uh, to help them to operate their, pro their IoT project. So we are helping from the beginning to the end of the project, our customers around this pro these IoT applications. Now, more interesting, coming to real example uh, of, of what are doing our customers with that technology. I will go through five examples because I thought it was important to take different examples across different industries. And uh, I hope it will give you a lot of ideas of what we can do with that technology. The first one is around smart city. You probably heard that's about smart city concept. It's a lot of different application across the city that enable the city to reduce the cost uh, of their infrastructure, of their applications they have in the city, but also to bring a better living to their citizens and bringing more services to the citizens in order to be more attractive as a city and, and keep developing uh, their, their, uh, their city for their citizens. One of the biggest spend for a city is the street lighting. It's probably, I think it's probably the, fir the first uh, cost center for, for a city. So they have to manage that cost, but today they have no control on their street lighting. If something, if, if, one, if one street light is getting down or broken, they cannot find out uh, remotely. They have to find out by circulating everywhere. So what is the solution for cities in order to control remotely their street lighting in order to spend less, but also to bring a better security to the people because the end of lighting helps on security in the cities as well. So we have developed a project together with Philips. Uh, here is just a, a summary so that they have developed a platform in order to connect every street light with a SIM so that you can control remotely the street, each, each single street light in the city. So instead of uh, managing, instead of having no control on your street lights, you have a full control on, on your street lighting. You can detect some fault, you can uh, switch off or switch on depending on the time, depending on any event happening somewhere, etc. Or you can even switch off, switch on and switch off depending on the, on the, on the circulation of people. The light will switch on when you, along when you move. So it's quite a, 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 a very smart technology that they have developed with that platform. And of course it goes with the, the, the IoT SIM from Vodafone in every single uh, street light. Los Angeles is the first big city that adopted it. Jakarta is another big one. There are couples in the UK as well. Yesterday we met some people from Reykjavik. They're also thinking to move to connect their street lighting. And uh, so the, the, the world is going there. It's only 1% of the street lights that are connected today. To give you an idea, so the potential of that market is just huge. Now more a retail uh, company example. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, ice crushed beverages. Polar Crush is a, is a UK company that is uh, developing, producing, and selling these machines, but also the syrup that goes in these machines. But they had two business issues that we've tried to help to sort out. The first one is that some of the machines are stolen and they don't know where they are, so they are losing quite a, a bit of money with that. Their second issue is that some of their customers are using a low-cost syrup instead of using their syrup. So they are losing some revenue. But worse than revenue, they are, losing, they are damaging their brand. And they, are damaging, they, they are damaging their reputation because the customer now then is not happy with a low-cost syrup instead of the polar crush syrup. So what they decided to do is to connect all their machines they are selling across Europe in order to know where is the machine, if, is it the syrup, the right syrup that has been used, and when is the syrup handed in terms of stock so that they can supply and deliver more syrup. So they are improving the, the, the loyalty and then the customer satisfaction at the end, uh, develop, keep developing their brand, of course, and generating more revenues by, by losing less machines. So I think it's a quite a nice story. You can replicate it for any beverage makers like 
we are in discussion with Heineken and Coca-Cola, all these companies who also want to be sure that their products are used in their own fridges. So they are the same. It applies to any kind of retail businesses. If we move to the industry, which I think in Iceland you have a lot of um, industry around equipment manufacturing. Karsha is, by the way, one of my favorite examples. Karsha is a German company with the leader in cleaning machines, especially high-pressure water cleaning machines, either industrial machines, either more consumer for cleaning your cars in your garden as well. But of course, they always start with the premium and industrial machines to deploy their IoT project, and then if it's successful and they see the benefits, then they will deploy to the more consumer uh, cleaning machines. Their problem is that they were selling machines and they had no more contact with their customer, because once you sell the machine, the customer is gone. If he wants to buy spare parts from another one, he can. He doesn't have to buy from Karcher. If the machine breaks down, they are not happy, and they, they will probably not buy Karcher next time. So they have decided to connect every of their industrial machines, starting from a few months ago, in order to remotely diagnostic the machine and do a preventive maintenance to detect any failure that could occur. That's the first objective. The second one is that as soon as there is a fault, or they feel that there will be a, a default in the machine, they propose or send the spare part to the customer so that it doesn't have to wait and doesn't have some time without the machine working. But they also do remote diagnostics, like for the cars, in fact, same, same as you would apply to a fleet management of cars, you can apply to the cleaning machines. They remotely diagnostic the machine to find out what are the first parts failing so that they can improve their product for the next generation. So wonderful, uh, wonderful story, how to generate more revenue, and how to, stay, how to stay connected with your customer, because most of the equipment vendors are not connected with their customer after they sold the machine. Now, who dreams to drive a car in the room? Probably a lot of people. Uh, myself as well, I would like to drive a car. But sometimes the, car, the Porsche car is a bit expensive for all of us, um, or most of the people in the world. So there is this cost barrier to buy a Porsche. But with technology, uh, Porsche was smart, and they developed uh, a new concept, which is a Porsche car sharing as a leasing. So in Netherlands, the Porsche distributor or dealers, importers exactly the word, have developed a solution where you can lease a car with three friends, up to three friends. You lease a car, and you co-own the car together. Because you know, the car culture has changed now. Owning, owning the car is not a must like it. Some of us really don't care if they own the car or not. Uh, it's not like 20 years ago where having your own car was, was a must. So with the technology inside the car, with a black box in the car and a SIM in the car, you can remotely know how many kilometers have been driven by each of the four friends that are driving that car, and you can then share the spend and through an application control what is the spend with the car, when is the next car availability, when my friends are not using next weekend, and so on and so on. So you can share the car and through the technology inside the car, you can, uh, you can um, enjoy the, driving a, a Porsche uh, sometime. And if you use it little, you will pay less than the others. If you use it more, you will pay more than the others. So I think it's a great story. In fact, that story could have never happened if Porsche had not decided five years ago to connect all their cars, because this technology has a cost to put in the car. But they have put it in the car before thinking about that project. That project came after an idea of Porsche Netherlands. Why not using that technology inside the car and, and do more and generate more services? Exactly what I've said before, generating more services and more revenue from technology. So Porsche decided a few years ago to connect all their cars because they wanted the customer to be able, through an app, to control his car. You can start the eating of your Porsche when you're at home, if it's cold outside. You can know where is your car if it's stolen, because there is a GPS inside bringing back the data through the, G the, the, through the cellular network. You can download the maps of where you want to go from your PC at home. When you come into your car, it's all ready to drive to the right path, etc. And you can bring internet in the next generation of Porsche. You can bring internet into the car so that your kids can play behind. So the car is already connected. And this idea is how to bring more from that technology that was, that was already in the car. If you think that all the cars will be connected within three to five years, you can imagine how many of um, ideas and uh, new business model you can propose to the customer. As a last example, coming to the health sector, we are very proud of working with a company called Exobionics. They developed a, a wearable robot, as I would call it, uh, to help people that cannot hold, hold, hold by themselves and to help them progressing to come back to be able to be autonomous and to be able to walk. It's quite uh, 
impressive technology. There is, a, of course, a SIM inside so that the, the doctors uh, can track the progress of the patient uh, that, is, that is at home or that, yeah, that at distance. And they can track the progress and they can fine tune the parameters of the machine depending on how it is evolving. So it's gathering and capturing a lot of data from the, from the robot and sending it back to the doctors and, and so that they can, uh, they can take the right decision about the patient. It's quite difficult to explain that solution, so I think the best way is to show you a video uh, about that fantastic technology. Hoping the video. I'm an ex-soldier. I got sent to the Falklands to run a team out there for six months. During an exercise, I got shot. Bullet went straight through my hip. I hit the ground and it just couldn't move my legs, so I kind of knew straight away that I was paralysed. So I spent two years rehabilitating, and about three years in, I found out about exoskeletons. I found EXO and realised this is something that could really help me. Exobionics is a human-centric robotics company. We make robots that wrap around a human being. We originated in California. Prior to Exobionics' start, really this was the stuff of science fiction. We had the technology that helped to make this much more feasible. Our collaboration with Vodafone in the Internet of Things has been very important for multiple reasons. We've got dozens of sensors in the legs and the feet and in the motors. The sensors throw off a lot of data. They're collected, they're transmitted through the Vodafone SIM, and the power behind it allows us to capture a lot of data and then really use this for giving it to the rehabilitation clinic so that they can know what to do with their patients the next time around. I kind of had the idea that it would just be nice to get up and walk. Then when I saw the device and walked in it, I found out there was more to it and realized this could be something to help me rehabilitate. The Vodafone Internet of Things solution has helped Exobionics an awful lot because it is much more reliable. For our manufacturing and operations, it allows us to provide one solution for the globe. We don't have to worry about a different solution for the U.S. versus Europe. We can also look at it in a larger cohort to see trends, for example. What we've found with Vodafone is truly a partnership. We're working closely with them, not just on the current products, but on the future products. And if you can imagine how important data is in the clinic, it's going to be even more important when you take these devices into the home. Now I'm getting so much progress and so much more function. It's a possibility I could use the EXO to the point where I wouldn't need the EXO anymore. And that's scary. That's scary because I never thought that would be possible. But we just wait and see. example to, to see how the Internet of Things can transform lives in that, in that case. I'm coming to the end of the presentation and uh, I hope I've been able to show you how this technology can uh, change your businesses or change lives in, uh, in uh, any uh, kind of industries. So we as Vodafone Iceland and Vodafone Group, we are here to help you to deploy your project, to help you to do consultancy in case you don't know what you could do. We can also bring you a lot of examples of what's happening across the world in your in the similar industries of what you are in. So we are here to help you and we want you to make a big success. Thank you very much. Tack. So thank you, Cyril. It was uh, very inspiring and obviously a lot of opportunities for the application of IoT. Now I, uh, now I want to ask the people to, uh, on the panel to join us here. And, uh, start to introduce them as when they come up to the panel. Of course, we have Cyril, then we have um, we have here Guðmundur Arason, he is the CEO of Securitas and he is also a board member of Arctic Tracks and it will be interesting to hear what he has to say about the application of IoT. Then next to him we have Thorvarður Sveinsson, head of strategy at Vodafone, so hopefully he can also give us a little bit more uh, insight into um, how Vodafone is taking this forward. We have then also Þuri Tryggvadóttir, she is operational manager at Eimskip Domestic. And then finally Ragnheir Magnusdóttir, business manager inside sales at Marel, and she is also chairman, chairman of the association of IT companies in Iceland.
I'm going to start to ask. The, uh, I'm going to start with asking them to tell us, like for two minutes, each one of them, briefly about their experience of I, uh, IFT. So, if you maybe start with Ragnar, if you're ready, if you tell us a little bit about what Marla is doing with IoT. No. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. We saw uh, videos from manufacturers, and of course, Marel is uh, one of the companies here in Iceland that is thinking about how we can go forward with IoT. Um, manufacturers are uh, not as technology savvy as many of the companies. Uh, you know, so there are more that are more IT. Uh, you know, uh, IT savvy, but uh, Marel surely has a IT in uh, their DNA. Uh, we have always had IT uh, all the way through our, our manufacturing equipment. What we are thinking about now regarding IoT is, well, we have all this equipment out in the field uh, at our customers, and uh, uh, we have uh, an IT platform called Innova, which is one of, one of our products where we can, you know, show our customers statistics for our equipment. But um, um, we could, could, can surely use that uh, platform, the Innova software, to uh, help us get the information from the manufacturing, com uh, manufacturing uh, equipment to our company. So, if a spare part is needed or consumable, we, we would know about it and could, we could go to our customers and say, well, you are uh, supposed to switch spare parts uh, in the next two months, so would you like us to come and, and fix it for you? Um, this brings out questions like, should we then maybe change our business models to, you know, instead of the customer owning the equipment, we should own it and just lease it and we take care of all the uh, spare parts and, and, and all the service for the equipment because we would know, uh, with the help of Internet of Things, when to service the equipment, when to do all those things. So, you know, these are really the questions that we are thinking about right now regarding the IoT, but there are lots of opportunities as well for our own manufacturing and how we take care of, uh, for example, our customers in that sense, no, sorry, our employees, uh, the safety of the employees and things like that. So there are many things that we could think about in this sense. Yeah, very interesting. Here is the no? yeah. yeah, very interesting because manufacturing is probably the kind of the foundation from IoT in the beginning, starting with the production and then the communication with the customers. But you were more saying you were starting with the customers, but you still have opportunities maybe inside of Marel. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll hear more about that uh, a bit later. But Thurier, maybe you can tell us about Aimskip, lo probably a lot of interesting things you are working on with uh, IoT. Yeah, there's a lot of things there. But uh, what we have been doing in, in Aimskip Domestic, we've been working with Controland and Vodafone. And we are monitoring our freezers and coolers around the country. Uh, some rural areas which have small freezers and, and but still we have to monitor them the same as the bigger ones. So we are using this temperature monitoring for all our freezers and also the cold chain monitoring. Um, what we saw in the beginning is very easy to put up the equipment. It's just plug and play. Uh, it's easy for us uh, because we don't have technicians all over the country. So it was easy for us to just uh, get started and we get warnings by SMS or email if something is going wrong uh, in the coolers. So uh, that, and it has warned us many times and prevented a lot of damage for us. Uh, what we are now doing with uh, Controlat also is the cold chain monitoring. So we have around 50 monitors and we do uh, these uh, random checks. We put the monitor in the morning in the shipment. Uh, usually we ship out around four o'clock in the afternoon, so it's keep, uh, kept in the cooler during that time. And then it's shipped out. The longest drive in Iceland, even though it's a small country, it takes a long time to drive and it can take up to nine or 10 hours to ship. 
and it's very important for us to monitor the shipments um, and see how the temperature is. So in the, then um, the customer gets the merchandise and we can prove that it was in the right condition. We are getting more from our customers, more demand to see that their products are cooled and frozen as they should be. Um, because it is a 24 hour process until uh, the addressee gets its shipment. So it's very important for us and for our clients to see uh, the condition of the product. This is just one of the things and we're very exciting to work with Vodafone and Controland and uh, because we have now new cold chain monitoring and uh, monitors and, and we are very excited about that with GPS and so on. Thank you. Uh, and then Guðmundur, uh, would be interesting to hear about Securitas and also uh, the other business you are involved with. Yes, uh, I represent today um, Securitas, um, which is home, in, uh, home alarms um, and uh, Arctic truck, <coughs> which is uh, uh, fleet management uh, service. Um, we have been at Securitas, we've been uh, operating a uh, net of things, not the internet of things, but a net of things by connecting uh, uh, homes to our central, central alarm station. And uh, uh, this operation has been since 1984. Um, <clears throat> but um, this operation is something that uh, the secure, security business and, and uh, the IoT business is, is a little bit uh, depending on. Uh, there's, a, there's a hub of services uh, being produced in, this, in the uh, uh, security business namely uh, uh, monitoring of, of uh, water um, uh, intrusion and, and stuff like that. But uh, this, this hub of service is maybe something that could evolve into uh, a, a broader service for the intelligent home. Um, the intelligent home would include uh, lighting, um, uh, energy, uh, efficiency and, and stuff like that. So, so uh, there's a, a uh, uh, there's a route for for uh, the IoT business to uh, uh, encapsulate what what has been done in the security business and, and take it take it from there. Um, our business of Arctic track uh, tracking uh, devices such as uh, automobiles, um, <clears throat> we've been operating that for quite a few years, and. Um, we have been following, following quite, um, uh, quite well the uh, advancement of, of uh, the connected car, which is something that's being you know, spoken about uh, the last couple of years. But uh, um, we have been uh, following quite closely uh, that, you know, that, that arena. Um, just to uh, uh, take a, 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 a small uh, insight into what, uh, as, as a manager of, of a company that is operating IoT, um, if someone from Vodafone came to me 10 years ago or five years ago, he, he would say in uh, the year 2016, you would have 5,000 connected devices. Uh, I, I wouldn't have believed what, what, what the situation is, but that's the situation today. We have 5,000 connected devices. And, and it's growing by the thousands of, uh, in every year. Um, <clears throat> and, um, you know, that, that's a quantum leap for, for uh, the businesses to uh, be able to manage such a, a large, uh, <coughs> uh, large dome of, of, of uh, uh, devices. And, and uh, of course, Vodafone is, is instrumental in, in uh, managing that, that these, you know, these connections. Thank you, and Thorvaldur, maybe it would be interesting to hear from you what Vodafone Iceland can do and the, co uh, and the agreement with, with, with you have, mm -hmm. that you have with Vodafone Europe, and what does it mean for Icelandic businesses yeah, thank and you. individuals? Yeah, thank you. If I may be just explaining a little bit uh, of how we see it and, and how we basically can provide uh, good service to our customers. is uh, We are now in the middle of what Stefan went over uh, earlier in his presentations in the solution value chain. We have on the one end, we have the connected devices. 
these are the uh, measurement equipment out in the field doing the, their, doing their work. And then on the other end, we have the enterprise IT systems that are basically generating or gathering data. In between, the, the, we, we actually have the communications. And the communications are actually built on decades of network built up. And we, and we have been doing that basically to provide mass market uh, solutions at scale, uh, basically tailored towards fairly simple solutions. Uh, and what we see now with the IoT revo revolution is that the requirements and the needs of our customers are <coughs> becoming so diversified that, this, that we needed to basically address how we are working as the adapter in the middle. How can we basically support our customers connecting all the devices out in the field uh, to the home-based enterprise solutions while making the best of the mass market ease of scale communication systems. And therefore, we needed to address aut automation, we needed to, to actually address security and so forth to, to actually continue to support our customers. And, and, and this is actually one of the cornerstones of our Vodafone Group partnership is to uh, take up the Vodafone portal that allows our customers basically to control and manage their own connectivity solutions in a much more efficient way than we have, we have been able to do in the, in the past, allowing us therefore, of course, to keep down cost. Uh, the second part is to really work as the, uh, is the knowledge adapter, if you like. We, we have all seen you know, different solutions and, and, uh, and different uh, equipments being out there in the fields doing, 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 doing the things. But in order to actually create value, we need industrial knowledge. We need to know the, sec the security business or the industrial business and, and, and the logistical business in order to create the value. And that is the kind of other part of our partnership now, is to have access to the world, world, world uh, experience from, from global to basically draw in uh, experience from all over the world to support our local customers here. Very interesting. Uh, before we open up for the questions, Cyril, maybe one question for you. Um, what's your view on Iceland? Are we ready for this and do you see any specific opportunities for Iceland? <coughs> ready now you are because you have access to that, yeah, that yeah. platform. So uh, for sure the, you are, the, you're ready and, and more importantly you're the customers are ready to, to play with that platform. For example, Securitas, I think you're not using the platform today, you're using end to end traditional SIM. You will see the benefit by getting that platform in order to expand even faster and get more control on your connectivity. So uh, yes, I see a lot of opportunities. The, I don't know the market as much as I know uh, UK or other markets, but for sure in terms of logistics, <coughs> there must be a, a lot of opportunities because either you import, either you export a lot for sure, being, being an island here, so I, I'm sure in terms of logistics you have a lot. In terms of industrial market and uh, in industry in general equipments, some of your machines probably go abroad, mm -hmm. and you probably don't so know what the yeah. they go abroad. Probably don't have control on what's happening there. And you cannot remotely manage them. So any company exporting will probably one day connect their machine, connect their products. It can be also we talk about machine, but consumer goods as well are more and more connected. So um, then, of course, the metering part, all utilities, distribution of energy for electricity smart meters for electricity, but also smart meters for water and smart meters for gas will also be connected. It will start with electricity like it happened in uh, continental Europe, but then with the new technology that I think Stefan presented quickly, narrowband IoT, we will be also able to be deeper inside the buildings. We will be able to connect the water meters and also connect the gas meters. You cannot bring electricity around the gas meters, so you need to have an autonomous device, battery powered, so low, low, consuming low energy. So then the, the utility energy sector will also be, be one. And then the insurances, for example, we didn't have time to talk today. Insurances company are moving to this IoT world as well. We talk about the pay per use or pay as you drive. You will pay the insurance depending on how much you drive and how you drive good or bad. As a, for example, a young driver, they tend to have more accident than the others. If, if, we can, if they can prove they drive very safely and very slowly, they will pay less premium than they would pay if they drive uh, on Saturday night uh, at 3 a.m. on the dangerous roads, for example. But we are also can apply to insurance's business for the smart home, as you mentioned. The insurances would like also to be part of the game and, uh, and the health, the telecare sector as well. The health sector will be the following one. So I think it w Iceland will follow the same process as every, the same flow as every country. 
for all sectors. <coughs> what about the, the biggest growth sector in Iceland is tourism. Is any, do you have any speci specific examples of that? Or then you of course mentioned some of them that definitely apply to, to the tourist industry, running a hotel or, <laughs> or car, car rental or something like that. But any specific examples you would have for that Tourism industry? for me is a bit like the smart city topic. There is a lot of applications which are going together with the, with the tourism. I had the chance to meet uh, some, some people uh, running uh, Reykjavik city uh, and uh, they wanted to bring the, the, the city and the, and the island smarter. So if we could know what are the trends and what are the preference of the different tourists across the country, we could then uh, control it better and bring new services. That, that's one idea. Another idea I've seen in Portugal, for example, is that they, they built some, uh, I don't call it in English, some bones, some stations where digital station interactive, where you can uh, ask what you like and they will propose you where to go in Iceland depending on what are your preferences. So interaction with the cities and interaction with the, the tourists uh, is possible if you bring back the data of all sensors and assets that are connected in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the island. I've seen there is an application to see about the Oreal, how do you call it, the Oreal, um, I forgot the word in English now. These colors in the sky, as you see, no? Northern Lights. Yeah, so you have an application about that, but you can think an application uh, that will talk about all the possibilities of tourism in, I in Iceland. One part of, uh, of uh, the tourism here in Iceland is uh, the amount of, of, of uh, rental cars um, and, uh, you know, the, the most uh, widely spread way, way of exploring Iceland is, is uh, renting a car and, and uh, driving around the country. And uh, the Icelandic rental cars companies are uh, employing um, uh, devices into their cars uh, right now as we speak. Um, and uh, uh, these devices will be able to um, give feedback to the rental car companies and also giving feedback to the, the drivers themselves. There are certain uh, security uh, issues here in Iceland regarding um, uh, the the uh, roads and, and uh, the the uh, uh, highlands of the country, and uh, this is where uh, the machine to machine goes to Internet of Things in a way that you can uh, you can give feedback and uh, both to the driver themselves and also to the uh, uh, ecosystem of of, of drivers uh, in a, a certain area. So that's evolving very rapidly at, at this moment. Yeah, I agree. I, I have an example which is interesting. I have a customer who is buying uh, IoT SIMs, but for uh, alarm systems and nothing, with the nothing linked with the cars. And he was not yet convinced by Vodafone versus another one, classical, uh, classical choice for our customers. And then suddenly he, he is driving a Porsche and he received a call from Vodafone Automotive managing the connected car services, uh, telling him, look, one of your parts is going to break down and you will have an issue with your car, you should better change that part. So he received a call in the car from someone taking care of him. It was such a kind of wow experience that after that he say, I love that technology, I love Vodafone, I want to work with you. It's just a, 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 an, an anecdote, but at the end it shows that this connection with the customer that you're talking about, is, is this interaction with the customer is something that is missing today. Mm -hmm. I call it the, co the connected customer. It's something super important to be connected with your customer. Yeah, I still found it quite uh, in, it, in, interesting how you were explaining how the connected Porsche car basically started as the as this Porsche wanted to connect the car. They actually hadn't thought about a totally new business model for the business. Then five years on the road, they actually came up with the Lisa Porsche, which is a com completely new model to sell the product. And I find this to be one of the in interesting things about the IoT is that kind of it uh, allows the businesses to revolutionize not just how they service their, their, their customers, but how they price and sell their products. Interesting. Um, it would be good to have some questions uh, from the audience. I'm sure you have some good ideas, so feel free to uh, come with some questions. Maybe people could just introduce themselves and, and maybe if you have a question for a specific speaker, uh, mention that. 
Yes, good morning. Thank you for a very good conference. Um, my name is Oliver from Iceland Post. I find it very interesting that in this parameter 2016, it's divided into five sections, and the last one is on security. To me, the most important thing, much more important than letting the insurance company know where and when I'm driving, much more, more concern is uh, the security of my home and my, <coughs> and my well-being, and my connected devices and internet and my network. Any thoughts on that? Well, if, if I could maybe address that in a, in a short. Um, <clears throat> the uh, connected home or, or uh, intelligent home has uh, both uh, has a flip side of, of uh, the security. Um, uh, the, the devices that are being sold to today uh, can be both secure and non-secure. Um, uh, it's of vital importance to be able to uh, spot fire with a fire alarm and uh, uh, break in with, with uh, a, a uh, intrusion alarm. Um, and uh, it's vital that um, it's not possible to uh, uh, infiltrate these systems. But uh, the development of, of uh, nice solutions such as lighting up uh, a home just before you get to the home, when, when your phone gets within a, a certain uh, geological area, for example, uh, 50 meters outside the home, uh, there's, a, there's gonna be a lighting um, in, in the front of the house and, and uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the main building. Uh, that's a nice oper operation or, or something that's really uh, the, the intelligent home thing. Um, but this, this is something that ha does not have the uh, intrinsic uh, uh, value of, of, of security. You, 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 can, you can allow someone to um, uh, hack into such a system, but you can never allow someone to hack into the uh, intrusion alarm and, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, fire alarm and, and water systems. That, that's something that, you know, it's, it's a market that has to take this into effect and, and uh, th this is our, uh, this is our uh, challenge at the moment is, is, is getting uh, the really robust, uh, uh, fully compliant uh, uh, system and add on to the, the really nice things. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a very important topic, and I think there was recently some news, there was like, I think vacuum cleaners, they were kind of hacked or something like that, you know, is it, is, 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 is it an issue or not? So maybe you could some, have some others to comment on it, like theory, what, what's your view on it on Inkscape? Is it important for you, security, or, or how do you look at it? Yes, of course, this security is very important. Um, well, for us, I'm not in the technical area <laughs> of Inkscape, but still. Um, we are always looking at these issues, and, and, but what I was mainly talking about, of course, was the monitors, mm -hmm. and, and that is also progressing, but of course it has to be important that the systems are ours and, and cannot be seen by anyone that is not supposed to see anything there. Right. So. What about Cyril? Maybe you can expand on that in, in general for, uh, for vote one, because I, I guess this is a big issue for, for many customers of yours. Yeah, security is at the heart of what we do, so that's why there is a, a, a part of the security in the US. So security is a quite a large concept. If we co co focus on the connectivity side of it, as I mentioned, the platform has been, is dedicated and is an independent infrastructure from the rest of our business for consumers and for your phones and so on. So the IoT infrastructure is independent. Of course, the network is the same, because we need to use the network, but at least the infrastructure is independent, so you cannot hack uh, uh, you cannot penetrate an act to the, to the IoT SIMs because they are not a normal SIMs, they are a dedicated IoT SIM in the platform. So at least we control security on, on our connectivity aspect. Now our customers are deploying a solution which brings device, cloud, uh, web applications, and, uh, or application enablement platform and so on. In that case we cannot guarantee the security of the whole solutions. But sometimes for the connected car services where we own the whole value chain because we acquired a company, Cobra, who's doing that. If we, if we control the end-to-end the end -end value chain, then we make sure that the security is from 
from the beginning to the end of the application. When, it's, when you don't control the full application, then we depend on our customers to focus on the connectivity on each of every part of, his, uh, of the value chain of his IoT project. So that's why we need to split the things. Just to give you an idea, the, the network of Vodafone is tentatively acts 50,000 times per day. So just to show, there is a huge security team which is trying to resist to any hacking of the network. I'm talking about a general network. Uh, so we have uh, really uh, hundreds of people working on security. In IoT, we didn't have security people five years ago, let's be honest. Today, we have a team of four or five people looking at that security aspect for, for the IoT because it's it becomes bigger and, and there has been some stories in the press. Uh, <laughs> so uh, um, that we, ne we need to respond to that. And probably, you know, important as Quim said, you need to differentiate a bit, you know, what kind of a <laughs> connections you're sending. Is it sensitive or not? And how important is it? And then it's more, of course, cost to it, the more, more security you have. Uh, more questions from the audience? Hello, my name is Inki. I'm, I'm part of the Icelandic Vodafone IoT team. Uh, I would like to point my question to Thirir. Uh, you talked about the tracking of the containers. You are measuring temperatures. So my question is, relating to the Porsche example that we, we heard that the new business opportunity came, Porsche car sharing. So has the measurement in the containers or the, the cold containers, has it brought new opportunities for you as a service to your customers or for them as a benefit to their maybe banks, financiers? No. Um, maybe you misunderstood me regarding the containers. Actually, we are not putting the monitors in the containers. We are putting it into boxes. Yeah, just to, to the regular shipments. Maybe a small store in, in Dubovo or something is getting one box of something and, and we put it in that box. So um, actually, um, when we when we monitor this, uh, this is this is getting to be more a priority for our customers. And this is getting to be a, a priority like that that uh, we even put it in their contracts that they want to see the measurements. Uh, we have to send the measurements and so on. So this is very very important thing of our of because we are um, we want to be a reliable company. And we want to show that this cold chain is unbroken from the moment we get the shipment and 24 hours later when we give it to the other sea. Um, your second, what was the second one of your question? I was wondering if, if it would bring any benefits for your customers to finance their shipments to say that I can guarantee that it will be that temperature from the all the supply chain. Yeah, yeah. and we guarantee uh, uh, a specific temperature, and we say that we uh, for cooled good goods it should not go up uh, to uh, more than four degrees. For frozen, it should be kept at minus 18 or lower. So, yeah, we promise that. But since we have so many shipments, we have up to 2,500 shipments a day. Uh, we have around 50 monitors today. The only problem with the monitors is that uh, what we have today is that getting them back. Because sometimes, because they are inside <coughs> the boxes and our drivers and our employees don't know in which box the monitors are. They are not getting them back. Uh, the shops, are supposed to get them back or, or give them to our drivers when they come the next day. And that is our main concern today. So that is why we are very interesting in working with Contraland with, uh, with uh, the new monitors that has GPS and, and, and we can follow it all the way. Today we can follow it from uh, our station and then it starts monitoring. And when it comes back into contact with our station, then we see the how it, it went. But with the new monitors, we can monitor it the whole way when it's in, in connection. So it's very, it's very exciting for us. Further questions from the audience? Hi, 
Hi, my name is Gumidur. I'm actually from Controlland. Um, I would like to ask Cyril, as both of you is kind of in the, let's say, the core, as you are connecting, you are the provider of the connection of the IoT. Do you have an active like business development where you see an opportunity for two of your customers to create a new product for the market? To create, sorry, could you repeat the question? To create um, you have two customers that are using your IoT platform. Yeah. Do you have an active business development to try to connect these customers to create a new product for the market? Wow, that's a new, <laughs> new concept. Let me think if I have an example like that. I don't think I have a concrete example on that, but sometimes we do a three-parted uh, partnership. For example, well, it will be announced in the press in, at the end of this week, so it's very short now. We, we do partnership with the, the SIM manufacturer, uh, who has a possibility to, over the year, uh, change the operator in some countries where we are not present, which is connected to our platform. And then the final customer is a point of sales, you know, t payment terminals, a company called Ingenico, you probably heard about them. So that the three of us are integrated with our platform so that there is a seamless process to control that connectivity. So I don't know if it's exactly what you ask, but sometimes we put together uh, two suppliers to provide a joint, a joint solution. We also, um, for the smart city project in Sevilla in Spain, we also, uh, we have also integrated with IBM uh, IoT uh, platform beyond connectivity around applications together with our connectivity platform so that we can offer to the city uh, an entire ecosystem to develop any kind of smart city application as well. So the, the ecosystem is very important in the IoT because here we, I've been focusing on connectivity, but as you can imagine, there are tens of suppliers of equipment, of devices, of gateways, tens of cloud and tens of web applications, and uh, the ecosystem working with all these players is, is very key to be sure it, 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 it works well. Because you said it was easy to install. I'm happy you say it, but it's true that a few years ago it was quite uh, painful to make your SIM work with your device and with your network and, and with the cloud. Now that it's much faster and much cheaper to deploy it. Yeah, if, if I may just add a bit to, to uh, that, and uh, I think that the that actually the solutions that are being generated through IoT tend to be uh, touching on many different things. Uh, it's the connectivity part, clear. It's often IT as well. It's uh, analytics of the data. It's selecting the right device and so forth. So we are actually seeing partnerships are becoming increasingly important. And, and this is not just true for small operators here in the middle of the Atlantic, but this is also true for world-leading companies all over. We, we, are, we, are, we are seeing Vodafone Group uh, partner with IBM to provide their customers with a, a fully integrated solutions touching on the entire chain. So kind of partnerships are becoming more and more of a trend in, in able to support the customers. Interesting. Uh, Ragnar, I have uh, one question for you. You, <coughs> because you're coming from a more of a, even though we see Marel as a high-tech company, it's a manufacturing company in, in a certain way, and you mentioned before that you see an opportunity to use IoT more with inside of Marel. Can you expand a bit on that? Yeah, of course. We, um, <coughs> we manufacture ourselves the products that we sell. And... Uh, uh, we, for example, talking about security, uh, um, our people that are working without, uh, within the factory, they need uh, certain security equipment, things like that. Uh, they have the security shoes on, things like that. And today, um, I've, I've heard about uh, technology where, um, for example, if we take a typical store, clothing store, uh, today there's technology when you can, you know, just scan the person walking in the store and see what kind of clothes the person wears. And if uh, the person is wearing uh, Chanel, you get Chanel service. And if you're wearing H&M, you, you do something else and, you know, probably get different prices as well. But I, I'm just thinking creatively, m maybe Marelle is, uh, you know, because we, we need to have our staff secure, they could, you know, we could scan them uh, on the way into the uh, factory and just see, well, uh, do they have their shoes on? Do, do they have the right clothes on? Do they have the right equipment in their hands? 
uh, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm just fabulating here. It's, uh, it's just a, a thing that we could be thinking about, uh, just an, an example. And, you know, I really do think we, we have this fourth industrial evolution going on, uh, revolution, and um, we're just starting. And in the middle of all this technology, we really need to be creative. So I think, you know, probably we need to get some creative hats inside companies like Marel, which, you know, maybe even artists coming in just to come with different kinds of solutions that we, than we have been doing before. Um, I, I've read uh, articles from, from, for example, World Economic Forum, where they, where they say that uh, the skill of creativity, it's a high leaper, you know, we're going from 10th place to 3rd place. Uh, when we ask our CEO, CEOs all around the world, they say creativity is third most important skill that our employees need to have. So, you know, in a place like Iceland, we, are, we have a lot of creativity and I think we really have a chance here. And um, when I look at Marel, we have this, um, if we were so, supposed to do Internet of Things only for our um, factories here in Iceland, it would be easy because everything is connected. Everything is, you know, easy to do. We are, uh, we have this uh, great, um, uh, we, we think it's easy to uh, use technology. Icelandic people are really technology savvy. So it would be easy, but we have all these other countries, all countries <laughs> around the world. And most of our factories are in rural, rural areas. So many of them aren't even connected. So, you know, connectivity will be a, a problem for us. So where to start? You know, Iceland is a good place to do this. And uh, I think we should be a front runner, for, you know, thinking about Iceland, how we can do this. We could probably show the world how to do this. Yeah. yeah, let's be the best practices for I, I, <laughs> <laughs> IoT. Yeah. And you know, for sure, as you say, it's important to bring innovation. Mm -hmm. And innovation is not always about doing something, new, new products, but also internally yeah. and, and combine that to IoT. Absolutely. Uh, more questions out with the audience? Hello. Uh, thank you for a great conference. Uh, I'm from Sindler, the elevator company, and I have a question for uh, Securitas. Uh, right now, you're, um, the customer has to provide you with a landline so you can connect your system to your base. Uh, when you move to IoT, do you see that business model changing? Will the customer provide you with the SIM card, or will you provide the customer with the SIM card and charge him for it? Um, yeah. This used to be the way that um, uh, people would um, provide the landline for the security system. But uh, this, uh, the last two years, we've been using uh, a combination of, of landlines and uh, uh, a, a GSM module. Um, <clears throat> and uh, current trends in, in, uh, uh, with, with the uh, telecom operators here in Iceland is that going from the, the, the copper and onto a uh, uh, light or, or uh, a, a fiber system um, that has forced us to uh, go away from the landline and onto a, a, a GSM module that we use and, and we are operating with Vodafone. Um, the uh, ownership of, of that communication is with my company. So uh, uh, the, uh, the consumer or, or our customer is no longer the uh, responsible party for uh, getting the transport of, of information from their home and into our central station. Okay, we, we are reaching the end, so I thought in the end we'd have a short round here. Everybody have an opportunity to say something in the end. If you maybe start with Thorvarður and then we take end with Cyril, he will say the final words. But maybe if you can uh, tell us a little bit of um, your experience with IoT and, and uh, maybe the obstacles you see so when you're implementing it and the opportunities you see in the 
in the coming coming years and maybe Thorvar you can say it more generally from from both of us yeah. point of view yeah thank you uh, what we have been discussing here are, are and quite uh, in interesting to hear from my fellow uh, panelists here basically uh, specific solutions we have a logistical solution security solution industrial solutions that are doing measurements and so forth so clearly kind of uh, tailor-made solutions uh, basically generating uh, output in, in interrupts uh, locations and so forth what i find to be of interest going forward and i would love to meet with you guys maybe in a year or or two to, to actually hear what you have, have about data analytics. You know, what, when you have been generating data for, uh, uh, for a number of years, you start to kind of see what additional value you can retrieve from analyzing this data that you have been gathering. So I find this to be uh, a value that we have just really started to actually scratch some. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Yeah, uh, we... I think we see a new application for IoT almost every day. Um, uh, I was just thinking about uh, uh, what uh, is, is happening in Marl regarding uh, security with, with, or, or, uh, with, the, with the employees. Uh, one application that we're driving at this moment is, is um, an application of, of lone worker safety. Um, someone that is not in a group of people, if something happens to this person, um, you know, it's possible that, that uh, he won't be able to alert anyone else uh, because he's all alone. Uh, a a uh, automation of, of sensing what, you know, uh, if, if the employee is incapacitated, uh, you know, not being able to speak or anything, he, he can't use the phone, but uh, there, are some, there is some equipment that we are uh, developing now and, and in incorporating into our service, is that sensing, you know, if something is wrong, is, is the heartbeat not uh, <clears throat> as it should be, has he, uh, has he fallen and, and stuff like that. So that's just, you know, that what we have been uh, uh, developing the, the last couple of months. Uh, and uh, services like that are, you know, uh, coming up to our, our, our table and, and for discussion, you know, um, uh, at least once a day. Yeah, I see a lot of, if I, I just look at these monitoring, I see a lot of opportunities there, both for our containers and, and for the other shipments. Um, because uh, today this is all manually that done. You know, we have electricians all around doing the manual reading on the containers on the ships. Uh, we have manual reading on the containers and uh, we have trucks all around the country and we have uh, many equipment that we need to see where it is and, and the situation of it. So I think there is a lot of opportunity there for us. Yes, um, well, Regarding Marel, uh, we have been this front runner for IT technology for our equipment for many years now, and uh, our competitors are still trying to follow up on some of the things that we have done there. So I would like to see us, you know, be the front IoT and for maybe, I don't know, virtual reality, augmented reality, things like that. Uh, I think um, we at least have a good base for that, and there's a lot of things going on, you know. Uh, if I had the job of just, you know, following what is going on, I would re be first really happy, but, <laughs> but it would, you know, I wouldn't uh, be able to follow everything. It's so much going on out there and, and we need to, you know, um, pick our solutions, pick our development uh, really carefully because, you know, where to start? It's, it's like that for me, but I, I truly believe we can be a front runner for this, for manufacturing, at least in, in the food industry. And Cyril, maybe, you know, finally, what, how can people get the most out of IoT and where to start if you haven't started yet? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so if they have not started, they just have to come and talk to us. We will, we will help them for sure. But I think it has been clear for, for the day, through the morning that the, the number of opportunities is infinite. There are many, many opportunities. And uh, even talking now, people, they can see people thinking of new ideas. So. <laughs> It's, it's quite uh, amazing the number of ideas we can have. Of course, then you need to pick up some of it 
and develop it and try it. My best advice would be just try it. We have some evaluation kits as well, which is so simple to try and connect some of your machine and see what it brings to you. I think the best is to try because we learn, we learn by trying, uh, not on books only. So I would say try it if you have not tried. If you are not convinced or if you have no ideas of what could be your company looking in the next three years in terms of digital transformation, IoT transformation, come to us and we will bring the right experts per vertical, as mentioned. We have different experts uh, in every verticals, health, utilities, uh, logistic, retail, consumer. And you need, to, you need to have this expertise in order, we need to have this expertise in order to understand your needs. So come to us. We have, we have now, I think, a networking session. If you want to come uh, to us, uh, we would be happy to, to give you more insight and uh, in the coming weeks as well. So we are really excited. We are really passionate by what we do. We hope we have transmitted this passion to you and uh, we are welcoming you to for any more questions later on. Thank you, and I want to thank uh, you especially, Cyril, for being here with us, and of course all the panelists who share your, your experience and hope everyone has some uh, inspiration of how to take IoT forward, and I want to thank you for coming today.